All right, good afternoon, everybody. Oh, I have to wait right for Cindy. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the, the agenda to pop up here. So, welcome. Do you need glasses? So, yeah, no, welcome to the Economic Tourism and Cultural Development uh, meeting. And we'll call it to order. And I need approval off the agenda. Anybody? Um, Councillor Tweel. I have a question on the question. I have a question on the agenda. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, maybe maybe you can do it under new business. I'd like to add a couple of things, a couple of items. Hey, what would you like to add? I uh, want to get updated on two positions, the management manager's position for economic development and tourism and the position for uh, the uh, cultural position that was uh, approved just a few months ago. Okay. So two positions that have yet to be filled, and I want to get a status report as to where we're at in the process. Any questions or comments on having them added to the agenda? Yeah, Mr. Chair, are they not uh, human resource issues on the manager? What was the other position? The uh, economic development officer, is that? Culture, the cultural position. Could I just try to find, is there a fine line there between operational and what we're responsible for as a standing committee? Can we? I, I think we are responsible. Well, no, I'm just asking the chair. I'm, I'm uncertain. I, I'm not sure where that line is drawn. Could, could I, through the CAO. chair, could I ask the CAO or the director or yeah. just to get clarification because I don't want to be getting into territory that might uh, confuse what we're, not confuse, but... Uh, uh, Melange, what we're doing here. Could I ask, sir? I don't know who wants Director to answer. Director C. Mr. Chair, uh, just to uh, provide a bit of a distinction, uh, typically, of course, to Councillor Tweel's point, um, it is appropriate uh, for him to inquire about matters related specifically to the department. With respect to the HR piece, the HR department is working with senior staff on rollout as it stands right now uh, uh, through the chair to you, Councillor Tweel. There is a rollout process that's in place right now that's a staggered approach because the Human Resources Department can't handle all of the rollouts in the first few months. So we're looking at doing a staggered approach to that. So um, we would be happy to share with you um, post-meeting um, at some point in time when we estimate we might get to those two specific positions, but they are part of our schedule. Okay, uh, just to follow up, uh, thank you for, for that answer. So if I understand it correctly, those two positions are going to be filled. As it stands right now, Councillor, those two positions are as per in the they're in the budget process so um anything further than that i'm i'm not really sure i understand the question but um those two positions are in the just recently approved budget yes and 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 i understand you know you're you're going through a process but nonetheless my question is um a i was looking for a status report which i think i got and secondly uh the positions are going to be filled that's my understanding, Councillor. Great, thank you. No further questions. So with that being, we don't need to add that to the agenda. That's correct? right. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Any declarations of uh, conflict of interest? Seeing none. Approval of the minutes from March 16th, 2023. Amen. Moved by uh, Mayor Brown, seconded by Mr. Uh, McAleer. Any business arising from those minutes? Seeing none, we'll move on to our first guest speaker, um, Pat 
Rick Dorsey from ACOA. So, okay. You're too fast for me. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Should I proceed? Proceed, yeah. And just keep your mic on there, please. Thank you. The only person that typically calls me Patrick is my mother when she's angry, so feel free to call me by Pat, Mr. Chairman. Uh, delighted to be here. Um, I have my colleague, uh, Dominic O'Connell, uh, with me. She's a uh, member of the management team of ACOA, and we're delighted, like I say, to be here in my, I think, 17 years as vice president of ACOA here in Charlton. I have been, this is my first trip to council uh, to formally present, so uh, pleased to have the invitation. And uh, the relationship with the city of Charlottetown is a very important one um, to achieve our goals. And you have been a long-standing and valued partner, so we're glad to continue that engagement. I do have a presentation. Um, uh, my understanding is we have about 20 minutes, so we'll, we'll, we'll try to move through the deck rather quickly so to uh, allow some time for discussion and questions, but I wanted to give you a bit of a, a COA 101 to start with. Um, the organization at a glance, um, who we are, uh, where we're situated in the province, uh, sort of our approach to economic development and our priorities. Uh, I'll cover off um, our programs and and um, uh, services that we provide in this organization. I'll talk a little bit about uh, our current area of focus and welcome your input uh, on those. And like I said, I'd like to uh, have some time for some conversation and uh, uh, questions. So. Um, ACO has been around since 1987. Uh, it's, uh, it's been uh, instituted as an act of parliament. Um, the organization is in all four Atlantic Canadian um, provinces. Regional offices are situated in each of the capitals. So we've been here since 1987 in Charlottetown. We're currently located at 100 Sydney Street above the Royal Bank. Um, the lion's share of our 48 employees uh, work out of that location. We are in full hybrid uh, mode, uh, but that is home base for our employees. We do have points of service throughout the province outside of Charlottetown in all three counties. Um, and typically our account officers and economic development officers are on the road and meet with uh, clients in their uh, offices or locations. I should say as well, uh, ACOA PEI, we have responsibility for the tourism file for the agency throughout Atlantic Canada. We also have uh, responsibility for the food industry, which is very important to Prince Edward Island, particularly Charlottetown, I would say. Um, so we manage policy development and program development out of Charlottetown for those two lines. Um, I like to say we rarely act alone. Um, we work a lot with uh, different stakeholders, including municipalities. I mentioned uh, the city of Charlottetown, an important uh, collaborator with us. Uh, we are um, uh, partners with local economic development groups, chambers of commerce, industry associations, uh, the provincial government. Other members or other parts of the federal government family are important partners of ours as well. There's two uh, parts uh, of our mandate that is legislated. Um, most often talked about is our programming, where we disperse uh, funds to support economic development. But the other side of the act uh, um, mandates the Minister of ACOA to advocate on behalf of the region. So in this case, Minister Petipa Taylor, the Minister of ACOA, and Minister responsible for official languages, has a responsibility to take matters that are in the interest of Atlantic Canada to Ottawa, the cabinet table, and advocate on behalf uh, where reasonable and appropriate. So that takes up, that's a complicated piece of business. Uh, it takes up uh, a lot of our uh, time and effort, but it's not talked about as much as our programming because you'll see announcements and et cetera, et cetera. So that's an important piece of what we do as well. Um, 
We have a number of programs, uh, and I'll get into the dollars and cents of this a little bit later, but uh, generally speaking, um, there are five primary programs. Uh, the REGI program, Regional Economic Growth Through Innovation, I would say is our flagship uh, program. Uh, it supports um, businesses to start, grow, and develop. Uh, it also has a stream for developing downstream ecosystem, um, things like the Bio Alliance, uh, I mentioned Chambers of Commerce, industry associations receive support through REGI. Our business development program is primarily utilized for straightforward expansions of existing businesses. Atlantic Innovation Fund, uh, that is to support uh, more research and development and patent um, um, development uh, for firms and organizations in Atlantic Canada. Innovative Communities Fund, um, that program is the one most often utilized to partner with municipalities uh, like Charlottetown. It targets uh, increasing communities' capacity for economic development through infrastructure development and planning. Uh, we also manage the Community Futures Program, which is a network of community-based lenders for business and organizations throughout Atlanta, Canada. We have three such organizations um, in Prince Edward Island, one for uh, the western part of PEI, one for Central, and the third for Eastern PEI. I should say as well, um, if we can just go back, that the agency is often asked by the government to deliver niche or special programs. So during COVID, uh, the government um, mandated ACOA to deliver many of the business relief programs, um, working capital programs that kept businesses going. We had a niche program for the seafood sector. Um, we're in the process of um, delivering on a program to support recovery in the tourism sector right now. Obviously, potato wart was uh, an economic challenge for our potato producers in PEI, and the agency was mandated to um, spend some time and effort and resources on that sector as well to transition it so that uh, it could be more resilient. And uh, we are currently in the last um, sort of stages of full implementation of the community uh, infrastructure program, also known as CCRF. Um, generally speaking, the agency and PEI delivers about $40 million uh, annually uh, into the economy uh, in direct support. Um, Last year, for example, ACOA completed 186 projects province-wide with a contribution of 44, almost $45 million. Um, we leveraged other funding and client capital um, for a total project costs of $123 million. Over the past five years, uh, the average number of projects about 200, 205 with an average uh, contribution from us of uh, 43 million. And similarly, over that th five year period, ACOA leveraged additional investments uh, outside of us of $61 million a year. That is a key metric for us. Uh, we like to invest directly where it can leverage other funding from other partners and commercial lenders. Uh, and that uh, adds to the economic impact uh, to the project, but also to the broader community. Um, we have a number of key growth sectors, um, um, ICT, bioscience, very important to the uh, city of Charlottetown, and we've seen significant investments from companies uh, in Charlottetown as a result of the opportunities that they have. And this is, uh, particularly in bioscience, a sector that didn't exist uh, 20 years ago and now is employing um, um, a couple of thousand islanders and represents a significant portion of our export values. Um, our area of focus, I, I, I would say we're 
we're very client centric. We want to be able to respond where there are needs, but there are four key areas that um, we are paying attention to. Um, skills and labor, this is something that um, is relatively new to the COA portfolio. It's something that we did not deal with materially um, probably up until about five years ago. Um, we considered this somebody else's business, HRSDC, uh, the provincial government. But the labor situation for business in this province and right across Canada is significant challenge to growth uh, and opportunity. So we've, we've, we've jumped into that file to try to be helpful. Uh, we primarily work directly with companies to customize programs or initiatives to support um, um, the attraction of skills, the retention of skills. We also have a long track record of working with UPEI, Holland College, College de Lille, and other uh, training institutions on developing programming and initiatives that support the needs of industry. Um, so that is uh, a preoccupation. It is a thing, you know, demographics would suggest that that challenge is not going to go away. Um, so we will continue to work on that. This government, uh, this federal government has prioritized um, um, the transition to the green economy and has asked ACOA to support its priority around that area. We look at it a couple of ways. One is to invest in individual business or SMEs to make that transition, to improve um, productivity, to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, and we think there are opportunities to uh, reduce operational costs uh, with some capital investment that will have a uh, lingering positive impact on the business's bottom line. Uh, we also uh, believe it's important to support companies that want to develop green technologies. Uh, and there are a number in this province that are doing some innovative things in that regard uh, that are clients of ours that is really exciting and will contribute to um, the shift to the green economy uh, worldwide, we hope, right here from, from Prince Edward Island. Um, business has told us uh, that they need support to automate their businesses, to shift to more digitization. We agree. We also think that this is one tool to um, reduce uh, over-dependence on labor that just is not available. Uh, and we've invested significantly in uh, automation of uh, manufacturing, food processing, bioscience, most places that produce something. Uh, and our clients of ours have invested in innovative technology to support process improvement and, and, and better outcomes for production. And lastly, inclusive growth is a key um, priority of ACOA and the government. Obviously, that incorporates a number of things. It incorporates um, primarily for the city of Charlottetown, increasing capacity of municipalities and other organizations that support municipalities to uh, take advantage of economic growth. This is where we also look uh, to support underrepresented um, um, individuals and groups that we feel should be participating in the workforce and want to be participating in the workforce and business more. Um, so we have a number of initiatives uh, in that area. I mentioned the sectors. Um, there's six listed there. Those represent the lion's share of what we uh, deal with on an ongoing basis, and I believe every one of them has significant footprints in the borders of, of the city of Charlottetown. So I'll stop there. Um, glad to answer any questions or have a discussion, but I'm most interested in hearing from committee members around uh, what your priorities are for the city, uh, what this committee's um, 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 uh, focus is and how uh, my organization, our organization, can support that work. Je veux dire que on a une version française à cette présentation. On peut avoir ça disponible si tu veux.
Merci. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. No, no, thank you, uh, Pat, for that presentation and all showing us all what ACOA does for us. So, um, do you have a question, uh, Councillor Twill? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Pat. Um, you've outlined different, uh, I guess, different uh, sectors or different uh, um, strategies of how uh, the agency uh, exists and some of the some of the major projects that that a call has been involved with without getting into specifics I'll tell you what I'm interested in is uh, preservation enhancement and uh, vitality of small business as you know small business is the backbone of this economy any economy in any Western democracy so Having said that, um, does ACOA play a role in helping assist and helping promote, whether it be financial, uh, blueprints, models, whatever the case may be, to truly helping small business? Yeah. Great question, Councillor. Uh, I would say 95% of our clients um, private sector clients would have less than 15 employees. Uh, so our, the backbone of the economy, as you pointed out, are those companies. And they represent, over-represent what we support, uh, quite frankly. Um, our programs provide a level of flexibility, we think, that allow us to meet the needs of the company. So. We try not to focus on cookie cutter approaches. We want to customize things. So companies have different challenges. Uh, as long as you're not, um, if your partnership with us will not give you an uneven competitive advantage over another competitor in the community, we want to support you. Now, Councillor, we work directly with primarily those sectors. When I mentioned the CBDCs, those are organizations that we support that support the really small businesses like retail, um, professional services. Those are, you know, so we provide a loan fund for those CBDCs to provide direct support to those companies. So the lion's share of our 40 or $45 million that go out the door each year are going to companies that you just mentioned. So, uh, thank you, Pat. So, uh, it's safe to say there is an opportunity, a real opportunity, to to um, help assist uh, small business that are, you know, as you pointed out during COVID. And, um, even Fiona, you want to throw that in? I mean, yeah. there's been some pretty challenging times, hard times. Yep. Hard times for small businesses, and uh, it's no secret, a lot of small businesses didn't make it. Yep. You know, 30%, I think, is a realistic figure. 30% of small businesses have, have now, you know, they're, 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 uh, they don't exist anymore. Yep. And, and it's been very, very difficult. So uh, having said that, um, does ACOA see uh, the need for... Um, you want to get creative or innovative for new opportunities, new opportunities to help small businesses meet those challenges. Yeah. So our focus during COVID was on keeping companies in business. Uh, so the government doubled essentially our budget to do that. We got into areas of focus that we had not been in before, providing working capital for businesses to survive during the pandemic. Um, we've shifted our focus. You know, over the pandemic, the number of projects and the number of dollars went out the door doubled. Um, our data has not been finalized as the results of that, but we're pretty optimistic that um, the business community in Prince Edward Island um, weathered that storm um, now, recovery 
um, phase that we're in today uh, is where the challenges sort of lie, where how do you build back uh, the businesses. But we're very optimistic. We're seeing lots of projects come in the door from clients that want to expand, grow their business, um, want to create new products, want to open up markets in different areas of the world that they've never worked before. So that tells me that they're optimistic about the prospects, uh, and we are too. Um, so we think that this can continue on. You mentioned Fiona, the counselor. Significant amount of devastation, as you know. Uh, ACOA was asked by the government to coordinate a $300 million fund to support um, uh, recovery uh, post-storm. Uh, uh, um, the lion's share of that damage was done in Prince Edward Island, so we expect the lion's share of the work and recovery will have to take place here. Some sectors, um, agriculture, aquaculture, those exposed to the elements most were most impacted, and we expect um, significant uh, reinvestments in those as well. So. You know, yes, lots of challenges, lots of blips in the road, uh, but the business community in this province has been exceptionally resilient, um, and I would say optimistic for the future. Thank you for those questions, Councillor Tweel. Councillor McAleer, you have a question? Hey, uh, Patrick, uh, thanks for your presentation. Your mic there, John. Mic up. Mic up, mic up. Thank you, uh, Patrick, for you and your assistant and your presentation. Just curious, uh, just kind of new to my role here and yep. the collaboration and all the pieces. Just wondered, um, down at the end of the street here, the Queen Street Wharf, um, and I know that's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a big, big piece of what's going to happen kind of going forward. Um, do, you, do, you, do, you see, uh, do you see where there can be some... some Collaboration, yeah. some some gathering yeah. the thoughts to see uh, yeah. where that can uh, possibly go, and, and and where would you maybe start uh, in terms of your advice piece on that? Sure. Um, we have a long track record, Councillor, of of working with stakeholders in the city, particularly on projects at the waterfront. You know, all of Peaks Key. Um, a lot of the developments that CADC has done over the years there and other parts of the city have been um, partnerships with us. We're prepared absolutely to sit with those that want to see things happen uh, in that part of the world. It's uh, a magnificent asset, our waterfront in Charlottetown, and I would commend those that have been responsible for its development and, and growth over the period of time. But as you as you infer, the job's not done. Uh, there's more to do, and we're absolutely prepared to be partners uh, with the City of Charlottetown and others on any project that uh, gets developed uh, in that area. I look at other jurisdictions that have done really great things, as Charlottetown does with their waterfronts and their centers and their economic drivers, and they're absolutely critical. Uh, so pleased to partner with, with the city on anything that you have in mind there. Just and just another thing um, on, on on one of your uh, earlier bullets with the breakout on yep. um, innovative uh, communities infrastructure, does that kind of uh, also do you support the uh, tying into the active transportation pieces and trails? Is there is yeah. um, there has been examples where we've supported that as a part of a bigger project. Um, um, Infrastructure, at one time, years ago, ACOA delivered all of the infrastructure programming for the federal government. Since that time, things have evolved, and, and that's not the case now. Um, but we are, we have, um, we've invested in, in some projects in that area, as I said, as part of uh, larger uh, projects for communities. Um, we tend to... Uh, want to focus on how the project will bring incremental dollars into the community. Like economic development is a primary consideration for us. 
um, tourism development. And trail systems, uh, outdoor adventure has proven to be a key sort of focus yeah. of that. So, yeah. But economic development would trump active transportation, kind of, probably. Uh, I think they both, there's opportunity for them to both work together, I would say. I don't, I'm not sure it's a zero-sum game every time. Yep. Thank you. And, and just on your, just on your math in general, you're saying you talk about small business, as Council Tweed alluded to. Um, so it's about 40 million a year uh, projects and 180. So would that, that kind of averages out uh, would 250, 275,000 kind of per project? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, I, the numbers were under 200,000, perhaps, or around $200,000 per project. Yeah. Now, yeah. some. Some counts are, you know, were seven-figure uh, projects, right. and others are yeah. much more uh, smaller, you know, yeah. twenty-five thousand-dollar yeah. projects, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. they run the gamut, but yeah. the focus is on um, meeting the needs of as many clients as we can. Yeah. And, and am I right in saying Sydney Street is the head office for ACOA in, Atl in, in Atlantic Canada? No, head office for Charlotte for P Prince Edward Island. Head office for Prince And it's the head office for tourism and food okay. for Atlantic Canada. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, I know we're getting short on time here. Is there any other quick questions? Okay. We have to be able to hear it one. <laughs> well, it's always good to have Mr. Dorsey come to City Hall. I'm sure that he is sort of feeling the history here of City Hall and a building that opened in 1888. So I'm glad that you're here, Patrick, and it's great to <clears throat> see your cohort sitting with you and providing some insight. But if I look at communities, look at Charlottetown, and Pat, you know this, that uh, CADC was a big part of that whole development plan down on Great George Street, Water Street, and now spreading throughout. And hopefully we can see CADC getting back into more economic generation, just as Councillor McAleer referred to about the Queen Street Wharf program, which is something that will be uh, uh, inspiration both socially and financially and for tourism reasons too. Um, and then I have a look at the, when you talked about ACOA and its involvement in communities, well, the gas tax has replaced your response. That, now that Canada, Canada Community Building Fund is what we are using for those infrastructures, but we still need the assistance of our partners like the province and uh, ACOA. And if I look at um, what you said about the $300 million um, injection of relief funding for the uh, Hurricane Fiona, so are, are there parameters like, uh, is, is, is that uh, defined within your uh, ACOA um, information for communities like Charlottetown to access that to maybe look at something like, for example, Morgan Lafferty, who is one of our arborists, was at a meeting last night for Fusion Charlottetown, and the destruction of Victoria Park will be a massive recovery uh, cost for the city and any other partners. And I'm not trying to identify yep. projects, but yep. I, I think, as you said, the majority of that funding could be going to Prince yep. Edward Island. Yeah, correct. Uh, I expect. I expect. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because the the majority of the the damage was done here in the province. Um, let me just talk a minute about the intention of the program. So, um, three hundred million. We've coordinated. So, other federal departments have taken. Um, envelopes of money out of that 300 million, so DFO, Further Wharfs, um, Transport uh, Canada for different initiatives, Parks Canada as well. Um, ACOA has retained um, an envelope of dollars. Um, the, the objective, Mr. Mayor, is as the Prime Minister announced when he announced the fund was for this fund to fill in gaps. So we've asked that clients that have incurred damage um, as a result of the uh, storm to first consult with their insurance. Um, after that, 
they should be going to the DFAA, the Federal Provincial Agreement, which can cover up to 90% of their losses. And if they're not eligible or only partially eligible for funding through the DFAA, they should come to us. Um, and those are starting to trickle in. But there has been, you know, a bottleneck with adjusters, et cetera, that has taken some time to get to us. So welcome any conversations bilaterally with the city around any particular needs that you may have as a result of that that you haven't been able to get accommodated elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. That federal uh, disaster administration program has been a great assistance to the province and all municipalities. So much appreciated. Yeah. And you know, we have a number of issues that are related to Fiona that are all naturally natural disasters that are all part of contributing to the green economy. Because as you know, more trees uh, reduce our carbon di dioxide uh, uh, in the atmosphere. So appreciate that, and I think we'll have to follow up on it. Just to sum up, Mr. Chair, um, I, I know that if we could just go back to that uh, supporting a diverse and resilient, I notice tourism is now gone. It's, a, it's, it's not there as one of your supporting. Is am I missing something, or is that well, you're, miss, you're missing tourism? It's on, it's the last one there, right? But there's no um, no. Um, Fox. Mm -hmm. There's there's no uh, mandate or mission going forward. Is it like to, to as you said in one of your slides, uh, then and now, um, building communities yeah. now economic recovery, building resiliency. I think that's what some of these bullets refer to. Tourism. What's What's yep. the future? Let me, let me just, we have a very uh, detailed and comprehensive tourism strategy uh, for the agency, Mr. Mayor. It focuses on um, three or four elements. Number one would be the high yield uh, traveler, extending the season, dispersion, so getting, getting, getting people to stay in different areas uh, of the province, and also innovation. So those that want to invest in their business on new product development. Uh, we do some tourism marketing with um, organizations, uh, but our focus uh, clearly in the agency is on building product and experiences for people to take advantage of. And ACOA, you know, its top list of sectors that we invest in, ACOA uh, tourism would be right at the top of the list. Continues to be. It's a it's a focus of my minister. Uh, she has. Um, um, dug into the file significantly and has asked us to uh, continue to invest in that sector. It's important and we will continue to do that. And just to close your, Mr. Chair, he does have a great minister. Minister Petabot Taylor is very enthusiastic, yes. very enthousiastic, enthusiastic and a Monctonian. So yes. thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And you're going to stick around if anybody has any questions afterwards, maybe, or uh, you take it off. You weak. No? You're all good? I don't. Okay. We're good? No. Everybody's good. You know where to find me. Yep. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks Domin for the invitation. Yeah. Dominic and Pat. Thank you. So next item on the agenda is discussion on the CADC, Queen's Wharf contribution request. Thank you, Mr. Long. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. Um, the Shelton Area Development Corporation, uh, as a partner of the city and a partner that falls to the uh, jurisdiction in terms of partnerships of the uh, this particular committee, um, is before us with a financial um, request. The uh, CADC manages the area around the 2023 numbers on the uh, waterfront, uh, which as everyone knows is a um, elevated uh, placemaking location. Uh, lots of locals, lots of tourists uh, are um, having lots of uh, fun and social interaction around that area. If if it's not, it is close to the uh, number one photographed area in the city, so it, it shows the number of uh, patrons that are in around that particular um, infrastructure. The um, brick pavers within the area um, are deteriorating. Um, I went down myself and had a look and took some photos. 
and CADC is looking to address this matter before we hit the uh, high tourism season and when the return of good weather that brings people to the outdoors. And they're asking uh, for the city to bring a, a contribution of $10,000 to this particular project, which is a total amount of uh, 70000 They have uh, committed partnerships now from themselves at $20,000. The uh, Atlantic Canada's Opportunity Agency at 20,000, and they have a request before the provincial government, which they're very positive about for 20,000. It just gets delayed with the uh, provincial election. So they're calling on the municipality to contribute to the last $10,000 envelope to this particular um, project. So today, uh, bringing forward to this committee, given our um, partnership with ACOA, and I believe it's more of an endorsement from this committee to up this to the Finance Auditing and Tendering Committee. The one thing I will say, this is a time-sensitive project. Uh, Cohen, uh, sorry, a CADC needs to push the budget, uh, sorry, the envelope and the budget, as well as the work on this project quickly in order to be ready. Um, as everyone knows, the cruise ship season starts in a couple of weeks, or if, if not a couple of weeks, maybe even next week. I need to look at the, uh, the schedule. Uh, the work definitely won't be done for then, but they're trying to get ahead of the uh, influx of traffic. Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, uh, thank you, Wayne. Uh, I looked at the breakdown, and uh, I would uh, move that we support uh, the $10,000 and forward the sign of the Finance Committee for approval. Seconded by Mayor Brown, so we'll send that to the Finance Committee. Uh, Can we speak to the motion? Order. We need a motion. So is that a motion? It's, that's a motion. I'm, I second it. Yeah. And I yeah said can I, can I speak to the motion? Oh, you want to speak to it? Sure. Yeah. So, Wayne, um, is, is this, again, capital or operational? I would think that it's a capital contribution, yeah. given so the nature a, of the project. Yeah. It's a capital asset, so we don't have to take it from... Operational and yeah, we, we don't own the asset or the property, so then it's not a capital asset, it's an operational request. Yeah, yeah, okay. Secondly, Wayne, Councillor McAleer referred to in referred to the Queen's Wharf in the previous presentation. Now that sits down there. Is CADC, I know CADC owns to the to the last hard property of that uh, that location, where that 2024 2023 signage sits, is that CADC? Is that the province? Or is that the federal government? Who owns it? it? It's my understanding, and I stand to be corrected, though, that the entire property is owned by the provincial government, but it's under the jurisdiction of CADC from a management perspective and looking after the the property. And so any time that we use that site for events, et cetera, we have to go through CADC to get permission for the entire property. Okay, could so I just ask if we can get that clarified? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Does, sorry, just one question. Does this have to go to tender? Is that no. another part of it? Who would be doing the work? It's a CADC project. The, simply is just, the city's simply being asked for a, a funding contribution. It would be up to CADC how they would manage uh, that work. Mr. Chair, the, the motion's on the floor. Can we have that vote to send it on to finance? Yeah, motion on the floor. What? No question, yes. Question is called. Everybody in favor? All in favor? All in favor, passed. So sent off to finance for approval for... $10,000. Just looking for my agenda. Oh, the name that's there on the report, the subject line. All right, thank you. I don't have, I can't control anything. Uh, next item on the agenda, proposed tax incentive for strategy amendments. Mr. Long. So, Mr. Chair, um, back in 2020, the uh, then um, Economic Development Tourism and Event Management Committee had recommended uh, some amendments to the tax incentive strategy. And uh, that particular item was to move forward to council and due to uh, some administrative 
um, challenges at the time. It didn't make it to the council floor. There was, in fact, a resolution drafted up um, to move uh, this particular item forward. And this item has uh, surfaced again recently, uh, um, given a request that's come to us from the PI Bio Alliance. Uh, they have two projects that CADC uh, has led and, and been the developer on in the uh, Bioscience Commons. Um, these particular projects, um, one of them I believe is built and the second one construction is currently underway. And the, there would be a couple of amendments to allow um, for these projects to be funded through uh, this particular program. And I'll walk the committee uh, through them in your, um, in your package. We do not currently have official asks uh, from the BioLines and or CADC. We simply have a request to amend uh, the strategy in order to account for these projects. As the committee would know, CADC develops a lot of uh, different um, assets and properties throughout the boundary of the city of Charlottetown and obviously they have an impact on the BioAlliance uh, sector. Recently, there was a major announcement uh, from the federal and provincial government um, in the millions of dollars for one of the largest funded uh, projects in the province's history in terms of the growth of bioscience, uh, and I believe it's fair to say everyone knows the strength and the relevance uh, to this particular um, industry. So if in your package, um, I did account for what the current terminology was and where the the amendments would be made. If you want to uh, follow along, uh, there's a couple of housekeeping um, amendments in, in here that are pretty much straightforward, just um, cleaning up the, uh, the document. But I will jump um, right to page number two, item number three. This would be a new uh, insertion within the document. Proposed projects owned by the Charlottetown Area Development Corporation are eligible if the projects are in support of 1A, 1B, and 2A. And that was the original um, signature amendment that the previous committee was recommending. Um, I believe Councillor Tweel, perhaps you were a member of that committee at the time, and the mayor uh, was also. Uh, Councillor McAleer and, and, and uh, our chair would be uh, new members and, and just being exposed to this now. And then the... Um, the second item um, would be 5B, which is now 5B, essentially adding to the terminology or biotechnology focused developments, whether private sector for not for profit, including in the BioCommons Research Park. With both of these amendments, it would allow uh, a non ramp for further development in the bioscience sector. As well, it would meet the request of uh, the PEI BioAlliance um, Society organization. There's one other uh, minor um, housekeeping on, on number three is just terminology around um, position titles. A couple of things uh, in addition to this to consider, a friendly reminder to the committee, we do have a number of projects that uh, were approved under the tax incentive um, strategy as a part of the budget process, but the committee uh, signaled their desire to have uh, proposals moving forward evaluated by staff and come forward on an individual basis with new projects uh, when we're outside of the budget period. So today we're not asking for a financial contribution, it is simply amendments to the strategy and then when applications come in, we will bring those applications forward one by one in terms of the outcome of evaluations and what the request is from a financial contribution. Another question? Uh, thank you, Wayne. Um, so, so one by one, the applications would be examined. So who does the assessment of, of the applications? Is it staff or is it this committee? Uh, Mr. Chair, staff would do the initial evaluation. It would be uh, a combination of both uh, departmental staff as well as senior staff including the CAO's office and or the director, and then a recommendation would be brought forward to this committee. Council in previous years have given that ability to staff 
to make the recommendations to do the evaluations. And in fact, in earlier years, um, staff could do the expenditure without coming to the committee. But during this year's budget process, knowing that these applications would come forward along with new additional applications as we emerge from the pandemic, the committee, um, it was the desire, the request of the committee that financial requests be brought forward on an individual basis versus just budgeting a large bucket of money at budget time. And, and that's why it's critical. As I asked earlier at the outset at this beginning of this meeting, but filling the two positions, because I recall our former uh, manager of economic development tourism um, would do all the uh, analysis and then bring it forward to to the committee. That was uh, that was our process. That was our procedure. You know, for for well over a decade. Thank you. Okay, so do we need a, a motion to approve the amendment? You would need to support a motion from this committee and then it would have to go on to council uh, for a resolution. Move. Move. Second. Second it, okay. Just speaking to the resolution, Mr. Chair. Now okay. that's on the floor. You got one so, minute. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, the delay of three years I think was caught up on who was administering the program because prior to that it was Ron Atkinson and I know Ron would do his due diligence and then bring them to committee so I think we're going to follow that process but on page two your incentive availability or the diminished incentive over five years do we not have or I've seen some in the past that were over 10 years is that an option? Uh, through the chair, Mr. Mayor, you are correct. There are some current applications. Perhaps some of them are at the end of their lifespan. I'm not yeah. sure if we have any 10-year ones now. Some of them have just um, expired. In the earlier years, council did approve um, some extended periods of time for particular projects. And these, uh, this particular strategy was amended, I believe, back in 2019 last. That brought it into a five-year um, funding period. So if we have a company that is getting offers from other jurisdictions and they're offering 10 years with a sliding scale or <clears throat> a tax incentive, how do we amend it? I think it's, I, I see it being no different than to the, where we are at today in terms of the process. Um, you know, if, if Council of the Day wishes to consider a substantial development and feel that this would put us in a more competitive position within the marketplace, then I think that it's a discussion that is had at the, uh, at the time. I think there was a lot of research done into these particular, um, these, this particular strategy over the course of time, mm -hmm. and this current position allows us to be competitive within the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But as you indicated, in any sector within economic development, it's becoming more competitive. It's no yeah. different compared to what pillar that you're looking at and, and incentives are important to success from a destination appeal. Like, could we look at a minimum of five and max of 10? And maybe that's not a discussion you wanna have now, but I think that it's that's a, a discussion worth having, Mr. Chair, because it, we did have it in the past, and uh, it worked in the past, and I don't know why it wouldn't work in the future. I know that it's, it's a tax loss, a uh, future tax loss for the city, but it's encouraging, uh, you know, the, the biotech, the info, uh, info, info technology, um, green technology. It's, it's uh, again, if we have to come back to this, we just go through this process to extended to a 10 year period, correct? The, through the chair, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I mean, that's, I think to me, that's one of the best paths forward. I think the other thing to consider is, is we've recently approved uh, some applications. There's, there's, there's a number of them in the hopper right now. So you don't want to become in a position where someone was recently approved and get into retroactive and, and have, have debates as well. I think that when it gives us a competitive edge to secure a signature development and or project, perhaps that flexibility would allow us to be more strategic. Yeah. 
And lastly, I hope that this encourages, Mr. Chair, I hope this encourages some of those economic generators out there to look at more uh, innovative ways to bring businesses innovative in terms of green technology, info technology, biotechnology to the city, city, uh, city of Charlottetown. Thank you. Yep. Question. Thank you. Okay. So, M Mr. Chair, just yep. for clarification, Your Worship, were you making an amendment to the number of years, or are we leaving it as is for now? I think that it's 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 a policy. It's not a, a bylaw, so it's easily amendable if we have to because of. Uh, if it was a bylaw, we'd have to go through first reading, second reading, and then other stages. So this, this is a policy. I think we can live with it at this point. Correct but it, is, it is important to note that the grants bylaw allows us to do this in conjunction with the MGA. Yeah. So is that done here at committee level? or does Committee it and then, and then, then goes recommend to it up. So do we park that until next meeting? You, if, no, just if it comes up. If I know that the manager or okay. the active manager, if he sees something that we have to look at, he'll take it back to this committee. That's, I just wanted to make sure that Perfect. room was there. Okay, great. So I'm calling the question. Question's called. All in favor? All in favor, passed. So. Excellent. Any new business? Seeing none, need a motion for adjournment. Mr. Twill? Second. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you.